Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Credit Chat Live. I'm Rod Griffin, Senior Director of Consumer Education and Advocacy for Experian. Sorry I'm late. It's been kind of crazy the last couple of weeks. I'm glad to at least be back for a little bit today. Uh, Ms. Alphalady, thanks for joining being part of the chat. I try to be here, 1.30 Central, 2.30 Eastern on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and just have been pulled in too many different directions, so I'm sorry for that. But back now, if you, Ms. ZD4, always great to see you. If you have any questions about credit reporting, credit scoring, fraud and ID theft, please let me know. I'll do my very best to answer. That's what this is all about. So, uh, helping each other share information, especially as we go through the crisis that we're in now and starting to emerge from, thankfully. So if you if you have questions, let me know. Uh, me, Michelle, good to see you too. Thanks for being here. And uh, I'll start out with, uh, if I don't get your question, uh, please be patient, repost if I miss it. Uh, I try to go back and catch as many as I can. I'll probably be abbreviated today since I, I was late, but I'll try to stay on for a while longer. Uh, and answer your questions, because if we can help get your questions answered, others have the same questions we know, and so we'll be able to share information that's helpful to everybody. Uh, and I always tell people, and, and Ms. ZD4, you've been joining long enough, you've heard me say this a hundred times, um, that I can do death by PowerPoint. I've been in the corporate world long enough. They teach you to do that. I don't want to do that. I can talk at you and never get to what you need to know. So I really want to be able to help get you the information you need uh, and, and around what's going on now and, what, and what's going to happen in the future. And we're starting to see uh, things evolve and reopen. I'm happy to say I'm in Texas, so we were able to get out a bit. And all, it poured rain all weekend, so we didn't get to get out much. But people, when we were, were still social distancing, still observing you know, the kinds of care that they should, but able to be out and communicate. So I'm very happy to see that. It kind of helps to get things going again. But from a credit reporting scoring standpoint, you know, continuing to do the thing, the same things that we're all trying to do, staying on top of our credit histories, make sure you get your credit report. It's available once a week now through annualcreditreport.com. You'll be able to know exactly what's in it, what you need to work on, if there are things you need help with. And so we want to make sure that you're working, if you're working with lenders because you've been affected by COVID-19 in terms of employment or income, you can get help with those things. So make sure that you're checking the report. Don't be afraid to do that so that you can get help if you need it. And you can make sure things are being reported correctly, that you know what's there. They're free. Don't affect your credit scores in any way. Now, the three credit bureaus never verify info will not allow you to make them verify a second time. Well, we do to a point, David James 101. The What happens when you dispute information is that our responsibility is to accurately show in your credit report what lenders tell us is in their records. So if a lender is saying that you're delinquent, have a late payment, uh, we, when you dispute, go to back to that lender on your behalf and say, you disagree and here's why. They are then accountable under federal law and our policies to verify their records and then respond to us and say, it should be updated in some way, it should be changed or it should be removed. Uh, and so the, the obligation is on them to verify that information. And if you disagree, you can provide documentation, you can provide a statement of dispute, and so we can show both sides of the story uh, So, and what you believe to be the case. So we show both sides, uh, but they have an obligation to quote, verify the information in their records. Uh, and so um, that's the process that's that's uh, followed, observed, and, and, and compliant with the FCRA, all of those things. So you have an opportunity to as well see that report, and if you disagree, to explain why and show that on your report. And we strongly encourage you to do that. Um, so uh, if you dispute exactly the same thing multiple times, which is a credit repair scheme uh, to dispute the, exactly the same thing, exactly the same way, hundreds of times in many cases, knowing that one of those disputes in writing generally will not uh, be completed within the 30 day time frame by the lender and result in it being removed from the report, uh, it was recognized as a scheme uh, it, by the federal government, by Congress, and they amended the Fair Credit Reporting Act years ago in the late 1990s, early 2000s, allowing lenders, if that happens, to report that the information should be restored to the credit file. We would then notify you as a consumer, uh, but also to declare a dispute frivolous. If it's been disputed multiple times, uh, we can declare that dispute as frivolous. It's been complete. It's been processed multiple times exactly the same way. We would notify you and, and wouldn't have to process it. So, And it's more than just twice. It's multiple times. Uh, so that's the process under law. So um, 
Matisco 14. Well, let me back up before we come to you. There's some others that came in. Um, Manole said, well, making a large purchase on a credit card drop your score. It can uh, temporarily. When you make a large purchase with a credit card, it increases the balance on that card as compared to the credit limit. That changes what we call your utilization rate or utilization ratio, your balance to limit ratio, both for that card and in total. So if you add up all of your credit card balances and all of your credit card limits and divide the balances by the limit, you get a balance to limit ratio or what we call utilization rate. The higher that rate, the, the more risk it represents, so it will lower your credit scores. So if you make a large purchase on a credit card, the balance on that card goes up significantly. That increases your utilization rate and your scores will drop. Uh, typically not a lot, generally just a you know, few points, maybe a few more, maybe you know, 10 or 20 points, sometimes more. I can tell you that over the holidays last year, I used one card to make all of our purchases. My wife and I visited family and, and bought fuel and travel costs and dinner and things like that. The balance went up significantly. My scores dropped about 40 points uh, over the course of no between November and the end of December. But when I repaid those balances, when the bill came due in January and the utilization rate went down, my scores came right back up. So when you have a higher utilization rate, when you pay those balances down, your scores will recover very quickly. That's something that's important to understand now in relation to COVID-19 and what we're going through. People may be using their credit cards as a stopgap to get through a difficult time. And that's what they're there for, for many people, is to help through an emergency. Yes, your scores will be going down, but that's okay if you have a plan to re re repay that debt and bring the balances down once you get through this and back to work and on your feet because your scores will rebound then. If you're unemployed, have a reduction in income, probably aren't applying for much credit, if any at all anyway, so your scores aren't the real issue. It's how do I get through this difficult time and then recover after and can I recover quickly? And with balances on credit cards with utilization rate, when you pay them down your scores, the next time that, that report's updated uh, and the scores are calculated, your scores will go back up. So it, you can recover quickly. So that's important to know as well, don't panic. Uh, but it, yes, it will change utilization rate. Your scores will likely come down, but it's usually temporary. When you bring down the balances, they will go back up and, and go back pretty quickly. I'm in forbearance. Uh, Matisco 14. I'm in forbearance with my mortgage. I reported payment on time this week uh, ends, but balance higher. So it decreases my score. Yeah. Um, it increases on experience FICO. Yeah. So can't speak to what's happening or scores used in other sites. Uh, it, because scores may be affected differently. What we are doing at the credit bureau is reporting that account as current in forbearance, uh, not getting more delinquent. Uh, so as, as reported by the lender and in, in uh, accordance with the CARES Act, so that your credit history protected if you're in forbearance. So the credit history is reflecting the account is current uh, and essentially what it was when that forbearance period started scoring questions that need to go to the scoring modelers in, in this case or to the source where you got it. I can't speak to, to those. Uh, now I'd like to understand mostly the revolving credits are more important than installment accounts scoring wise. Now uh, to a degree. So when we think about revolving accounts, credit cards, it's good to have one or two because when you have one or two revolving accounts or credit cards, you decide how much you're going to charge each month. You decide how much you're going to repay. It goes back to that utilization rate we were just talking about. When you decide you know, how much you're going to charge, that's up to you. With an installment loan, you're told you'll pay a certain amount on a certain date for a certain period of time. So there's no, what I think of as free will in that decision. So with a credit card or a revolving account, you are deciding how much to charge, how much to pay. You can max out the card. You can charge just a little bit. You can pay the full balance. You can pay the minimum due. You can pay something in between. Because of that ability for you to make those decisions, credit cards, one or two of them, can uh, having them is good because it gives a bit better insight into how you make independent borrowing and repayment decisions. That can help you build scores a bit more quickly so they can weigh a bit more heavily depending on the type of loan and, and generally speaking. So it's good to have one or two. doesn't mean you have to have a lot and it doesn't mean you cannot have good credit scores if you just have installment loans. You can have great credit scores if you just have installment loans, auto loan, a car loan, a retail loan. As long as you're paying them on well, you're paying them well and on time, it just might take longer to build that score. So 
keep that in mind. One or two cards, generally good. Don't have to have a lot. Keep the balances low. Pay the bills on time. Pay them in full if you can. That's going to be good for your credit scores. How can you move an inquiry? Um, Mariah Smith D., if the inquiry is not the result of fraud, we cannot remove it. It's a record that someone's looked at your report. That's all an inquiry is. There are hard inquiries that are a result of your application for credit. If you did not apply, it's fraudulent. Notify us that there's, it's a fraudulent inquiry. You can dispute that as fraudulent and we'll be able to remove it. If it's a soft inquiry, someone's looked at your report for pre-approved offer, getting your own report, insurance purposes, uh, Reviews by existing lenders. I'm trying to think all of the reasons you might have soft inquiries. Those will remain. Uh, again, if they're fraudulent, we could take them up. But generally, they're just a record that someone's looked at your report. Hard inquiries can affect your scores a little bit. And just a little bit, they're the least important factor. Soft inquiries don't affect scores at all. We want you to have that record so that you can know who's looked at the report for exactly what you're mentioning. If there's a, a, an inquiry that is not yours and not the result of something you did and not something you can explain, so like a, a pre-screened offer, a pre-approved offer, you know why that's happened. They've reviewed your report to make an offer. That's fine. Uh, you can opt out of that. doesn't affect scores in any way. But you can opt out if you choose to so that they don't conduct that process. But if there's something there that's indi indicating fraud that you don't recognize, we want to make sure it's shown. So that's why we have them there uh, and make sure that they stay. So, and we can't remove it unless it's fraudulent because it's just simply a record that someone's looked at to report for your records. Uh, and so you can see that. Um, and Noles, th you're very welcome. Thanks for being here. Uh, welcome to Azaz from Saudi Arabia. Um, unfortunately, I can't speak to information, to credit histories or reports or scores or things outside of the U.S. I'm in experience North America in the U.S. So things differ uh, in terms of how thing, how credit reporting works in other countries. The laws are different. The information in the reports is different. How they're matched to individuals is different. For example, I, I think it's really interesting in the U.S., everybody has their own credit report. Whether you're married or single, live in the same household or not, you have your own individual credit report. In other parts of the world, you may be associated with your roommates in your credit report. So if you share an address, everybody might be connected to a credit report. Uh, don't do that. We don't do that in the U.S. So it's, di it's very different. So I can only speak to that. COVID-19 in the future, the economy, is it best to keep a car loan or pay it off or to keep good credit? If you have a car loan, you're paying it on time. You know, that kind of, that's your decision. You know, paying it off is always good. It always shows it's paid and paid in full on a credit report. That's always positive. You might see your scores decrease a bit when you pay it off for, at first because that's a big change in terms of payment status, and that can cause scores to dip because of that big shift. But generally, scores come back up. Uh, you know, if, So if you're reducing your cost in times of uncertainty and you can pay off the loan, and maybe it's a good thing because you, then, you, then you would have more disposable income to put toward other expenses uh, or into savings, that might be good. It depends on your overall situation. Look at your overall financial situation to make that decision. Don't let a credit score cause you to make a bad overall financial decision. I hear people too often who are so focused on the credit score that they don't think about the bigger picture of their finances and make could potentially anyway make a bad financial decision for a short-term issue with their credit score. So be sure that you're looking at the overall financial picture. If it's best for you to pay it off, by all means, pay it off. If you can continue to make those payments on time and there are other things you need to do financially, continue to make the payments on time. So look at your overall situation. A credit score is just one factor in that financial decision, just like it's one factor when a lender is making a lending decision. There are other things to take in, into consideration. So make sure you're looking at the whole picture. That uh, would be my advice there. Sweet and Sour 21, why do some companies not update very often? I had to dispute two companies. When they report to us, they update essentially once a month. It's, and it depends on where you are in the billing cycle. It may have been that when you first saw the issue and disputed, it was right at the beginning of the billing cycle. You, you need to allow 30 days, sometimes a bit more, for information to be updated. That's what the dispute process, is, process allows, in part because that's how often things are updated, in part because we used to have to mail documents, paper documents, and that would take time. We don't have to do that very often. Most of the time today, disputes are completed within 10 to 14 business days. 
often within two or three days if it's a fairly straightforward dispute and electronically transferred, those sorts of things. So usually it's fairly quick. Sometimes it takes longer, and that may have been the case uh, in your situation. Not sure. All my revolving accounts are paid off. That's fantastic. So carrying a zero balance or making uh, full payment every month is ideal for your credit report. You do not have to carry a balance. People often have that misperception. Uh, not necessary. Uh, I've heard people say, and, I, and for years it pops back up, that you should only pay 95% of your balance to help your scores. That is not true. If you pay 95% of a balance, that means you get to pay interest on the remaining 5%. From a scoring standpoint, doesn't help at all. What happens with credit scores and credit card balances is that usually the balance you will see in your credit report is the balance on your billing statement. So even if you pay the balance in full each month, you're still going to see a balance reported on your credit report because it reflects what was in the billing statement at the end of the billing cycle. The only way to have a zero balance reported is to pay the balance in full on that credit card and then not use it at all the next month so that you go a full billing cycle and that zero balance can be reported because there's been no balance uh, in that month. So that's about the only way to do that. So usually you'll still see a balance even if you pay it in full each month. So pay it in full each month if you can. So if you have a charge off on your report, once it's paid, what is the best way to improve it? Patience and time. In some cases, if there's a charge off, if it goes to collection, if you pay the collection account, the collection account will be updated to show paid. That collection account will then, in, in the newest scores from FICO and Vantage score, be excluded from the calculation. So a, a collection account that's paid in full will in potentially not affect scores anymore once it's reported as paid in full. So that can help. You would still have the charged off account that's still going to be negative. So it's still going to drag you down some. But if you can continue to make those payments on time, pay off any collection account, uh, in time, your scores will go back up. The further in the past the charge-off occurred, the less effect it will have on your credit score. So that will, time is a, a critical factor that has to be considered. Uh, so the further in the past, the, the less it will affect your score, to, and it will take some time. It took your advice, and it increased your score 76 points. Fantastic. Matisco 14, thank you so much. Gl thank you for sharing that. I'm glad I was able to share information that's helpful and that's what we're here for. Getting your questions answered is going to be more helpful than me rambling on about high level credit reporting stuff. I could do that if anybody wants me to, but it, w it probably wouldn't be all that helpful. Uh, so, uh, but if I can answer the kinds of questions you're asking, it helps other people to understand some of the, the more detailed kinds of things that need to know. And that's what I want to do. So thank you so much. It's fantastic to hear and keep doing what you're doing, and I'll, I'll keep trying to give information that's helpful for you. I use Discover Card to keep track of free credit report. Any other way to get monthly free scores? So, uh, Todd Nance, there are a number of ways to get free reports. Obviously, you can get your free credit report once a week now through annualcreditreport.com. You can get free scores if you enroll in Experian's app online. You can get a free score once a month. Uh, and uh, credit report information as well at no cost. So you get a free FICO 8 score, and there are other places online as well. When you get your free annual credit report, the, you will not get a credit score. Credit scores are not part of a credit report, and that's a common misperception. They're two different things. A credit score is a tool that's used to analyze the information in the credit report. And what happens is when a lender gets your report, they specify what score to use, or they'll get your report and they'll calculate their own score once they have it. So it's like a, a grade on a paper is the way I describe it. If you're in school, you write the paper, that's like the credit report. The teachers like the lender, they assign a grade and the grade is like the credit score. So it's two different things. And so you won't see a credit score. There are lots of different credit scores out there. People know FICO, the name FICO. They're a credit scoring company. They create a number of different credit scores for different types of lending. So things like if you're buying a car, there's a FICO score for that. If you're buying a house, there's a mortgage FICO score. There are generic FICO scores. There are credit scores for credit unions, and there are credit scores for national banks. So lots of different scores, and that's why they're not part of a report. We provide the credit report. You have three credit reports. You can get those free once a week at annualcreditreport.com or once a year when we get through this and it goes back potentially to the normals, if there's going to be such a thing. But 
your credit scores are from FICO or Vantage Score are the two major players in the in the market. There are others as well. Uh, so different places you can get them from lenders, from Experian, from other sources. Taz, one, two, three, four, five, six. You're free to ask a question if it has anything to do with credit reporting, scoring, fraud, ID, that things I can answer. I'd be happy to share if I have information that's, that will be helpful. Uh, so Todd Nance, Met Scores here. No, and that's right where I went to. So <laughs> that's kind of what I assume. Uh, free FICO score. So, yeah. So, and you get a free FICO score from Experian, a FICO 8 score. Uh, and, you know, the other, other ways to get free scores as well, if, if you enroll in Experian Boost, for example, and add your cell phone payments or your utility payments to your credit report, your positive payments, we'll give you a free FICO 8 score at the beginning of that process. And then again, at the end, uh, as, and but that's a choice you make the, and it's you would enroll uh, and give us permission to access that information. We see that help people's scores on uh, two out of three people see an increase of about 13 points. So that's my mention for experience boost for the day. Uh, but, you know, something you might be interested in if you're viewing, you're working on improving your scores. Uh, so um, think that something to consider. There's scores from a variety of different places. Uh, me, Michelle, 793 score. Uh, if I apply for a 0% credit card to pay off a car loan, will it save interest and is it worth it? Um, congratulations. You don't have anything to worry about with your credit score. 793 is a very, very strong score. You'll be able to qualify for the best terms and the best rates. In terms of paying off the credit card, it's hard to say. Depends on the score. Depends on your loan with the auto dealer. Depends on whether the credit card company will let you pay off a car loan with your credit card. Some won't do, won't allow that. Or the bank may not allow you to pay off the loan with a credit card. So make sure you understand the terms and the agreements there. If there's a teaser, what we call teaser rate, a 0% interest for a certain period of time. Uh, and, oh, well, the 3500 they probably will let you do that. Don't know. I mean, it may be a policy thing. So just be sure that you know, if, if it's a policy and not related to the amount, you know, they may just prohibit paying a car loan with uh, a credit card or the bank might. So be sure you, you verify that. Uh, you know, if you can, and then from there, it's if you want the card, you pay it in full uh, within the teaser period, within that six months or a year, whatever it might be, before your rates jump up to 15 or 20 or 30 percent, whatever it might be. Uh, it could be a good plan. Uh, you know, we and and using credit cards in that way can be beneficial. I've done it in the past. I've used teaser lower interest rates or zero rates to pay down previous debts. So and it's worked well as long as you pay it within that time frame. So important, but you're doing the right things with a 793 score. So keep doing whatever it is you're doing. Uh, you're paying your bills on time. I'm sure you're keeping your balances low, obviously on your cards. Um, doing kind of common sense stuff is my guess. And that's the best way to, to, to have good scores. Now uh, you tried boost. And it wasn't picking up my payments. Is there another way at this point? No. Uh, and it, if it's not picking up the payments, it may be because the bank uh, is not in our system. That happened to me initially it could be that the utility doesn't report. Don't know. It, we, if you are, you have to be paying it or did have to be paying those utilities or cell phone payments through a savings account or a checking account. It had to be what we call a demand deposit account. You couldn't play, couldn't pay with a credit card. That system, I believe, now has been updated. It was in certainly in process, so that may have been an issue as well. So you might check again and see if they can do that. Uh, it, it has to also be distinguishable. Uh, another issue I've come across is that if you have, for example, a water bill, but it's part of a municipal system, so you see a bill from the, the city of whatever it might be, we wouldn't be able to capture the water bill because it's within that. You know, could be multiple things. So it could be water bill, uh, you know, trash pickup, those sorts of things. If it's blended, we can't, may not be able to capture it either. So there are a few instances where we may not be able to. Uh, and uh, the, the, both of those have actually happened to me. So um, so I've, I'm, I'm right there with you. So I understand what's happened. So most of the time we can, I'm not sure exactly what's happening in this case. So uh, Queen v, uh, me and Michelle, thank you. And thank you all. Uh, and thank you for being part of the chat. I'm sorry I started late today. I want to get back on track. The last few weeks have just been uh, going crazy. Uh <laughs> Yeah, demand deposit account. That's what they call a checking out or savings account. That's, I had the same question. <laughs> a what? And they said, well, it's our checking or savings. Oh, gotcha. So it could be a CD, you know, things that you can draw, maybe not a CD, but things you can withdraw funds from from a bank you know, and, and you get a statement for. And so we have to be able to see that payment in the statement, you know, the name of that utility provider or cell phone company. That, that was the, 
the issue initially. So thank you all for being part of the credit chat today. I'm sorry I've been so absent the last couple of weeks. I want to get back on track. I plan to be here. Join us tomorrow on Twitter on our credit chat. We're uh, back on track there and have great conversations uh, as we always do. Two o'clock central, three Eastern on Twitter on Wednesdays. We'll be here. I'll be here on Thursday, 1.30 Central, 2.30 Eastern on Periscope to answer your questions and talk about new developments, things that have been happening. And join us on Credit Chat Live, hashtag Credit Chat Live on Crowdcast and Facebook Live on Fridays, 11.30 Central, 12.30 Eastern. Myself, Christina Roman and Jennifer White, are my team are, are here to help answer your questions and talk about issues and, and things that we're seeing happening. So what, everybody participate there. So join us. You can find more information at ex.pn slash credit chat live and at ex.pn slash credit chat. Hope to see you all very good, very soon. Please stay well. Please stay safe and enjoy the rest of the week. We'll talk soon. Take care, everybody.